Hi everyone, it's three o'clock, so we are going to get started. My name is Krista Averill. I'm the assessment coordinator for the NWEA assessments, as well as for Maine Science. And we're glad that you could join us today. We have a lot of great information to share with you. Before I turn it over to our NWEA folks, I just wanna do a few housekeeping items. So first of all, we do have many participants here today. We ask that you please remain muted during the webinar <clears throat> and a host may mute you as needed. If you have a question, there is a question and answer button in the menu bar. Others can see your questions and everyone can see our answers to those questions. We do ask that you use that feature for all of your questions today. The chat is enabled as well. So the chat is a place where you can send private messages to the hosts only, and only the hosts and panelists will be able to see your messages. So again, please use the Q&A for all of your questions. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mindy from NWEA. Perfect, thank you, Krista. Hello, everyone. My name is Mindy Stoby, and I am one of the program managers um, working with Maine. We will have a great group of support from both NWEA and uh, the Maine DOE. So as you know, Krista, uh, she is your assessment coordinator. I will be joined by Tara Davis and Fred Valenzuela, Valenzuela um, here shortly, and we also have Alex Luizzi on the line as well. We are going to cover a lot of material today. So um, one of the things that we will be doing is we will be taking a, a pause in between each, each section so that we can answer any questions that may be in the Q&A, as well as answer any other uh, questions that have come out of that section covered. We will also have time at the end of uh, the training for additional uh, questions as well. So as I mentioned, we do have a lot of material that we are gonna cover. Um, and so I am gonna be turning off my camera for a large portion um, of this training. Feel free to do the same. Um, it can help with bandwidth and we want everyone to just focus uh, solely on the material today. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. So there's a lot of sections that we're gonna cover. Um, we're gonna go through an overview of what the main through your assessment is. We're gonna talk about uh, technology readiness, um, managing the assessment in our platform, which is called Acacia. We're gonna touch a little bit on accessibility in the state of Maine. We'll go through not tested codes, We'll talk about preparing and monitoring the assessments. We'll talk about regional and out-of-state programs. And then we're gonna get into the proctor and student experience. What will uh, that look like for both the proctors, um, assessment coordinators and students taking the assessment. We'll talk uh, about operational reports, um, get into data and reporting. And then we will um, start to wrap up with some preparation, resources, tips, and then where to uh, communicate if you have questions about policies or about um, the assessment itself. And then, as I mentioned, we will have um, some time for question and answers at the end as well. So let's first get into an overview of uh, the main through year assessment. So the main three year assessment will cover mathematics and reading for grades three through eight and second year of high school. The spring assessment window is from May 1st through the 26th and the assessment will be available online, uh, paper, pencil, large print, as well as braille. Um, some suggestions um, when it comes to scheduling the assessments. We recommend that assessments not be given on a Monday and that two assessments not be given on the same day. Here we have some information on testing time and scheduling recommendations. So the estimated time it will take to complete an assessment is around 60 minutes. For math in grades three through eight, there will be a total of 52 questions. In reading grades three through eight, there will be 48 questions. And then for math in that second year of high school, there will be 52 questions. And for reading also in that second year of high school, there will be 47 questions. Um, 
as I mentioned, um, SAUs will have the flexibility of scheduling their assessments. Um, again, we just recommend that they not happen on a Monday um, and that we're not giving students two assessments um, on the same day. When it comes to testing time and scheduling recommendations, that estimated 60 minutes does not include uh, test ticket distribution, getting that secure browser launched, or the students actually logging into the assessment. If a student needs to pause during the assessment, they can do this just by logging out. Um, in the Acacia platform, all questions that have been answered will be saved. And then when the student logs back in, they will pick up on the next question. Students will be automatically logged out after 15 minutes of inactivity. And there is no action for the proctor to take for students to resume their assessments. They just log back in using that information on their test ticket. We do have a student tutorial. It's an interactive video that goes over the main through year assessment and it is available for students to really learn how to use the online assessment platform. Uh, during the student tutorial, they will be shown how to log into the assessment, how to use the various online tools, uh, navigate throughout the platform, how to respond to different item types, and some tips for taking the assessment. We also have an item type sampler um, or a practice assessment that is also available. And so this again gives students an opportunity to practice each of those item types and gain uh, familiarity with the platform. Please do keep in mind that these items are designed to give students a chance to use the software. And so it's not about studying the content or preparing for the actual math and reading assessment that they will take. It will include all item types and tools for each grade and subject. We do have paper item type samplers that are also available as PDFs um, that schools can download and print. And there are answer keys for both online and paper item type samplers. They are currently uh, residing on the main DOE website under the NWEA section. Having your students practice using this online item type sampler uh, within the secure browser is also a great way to ensure that your devices meet all of the system requirements before the actual day of the assessment. So this first image um, is where the item type sampler is located within the secure testing browser. And the second image shows what that login screen will look like. So they will select the year, the grade, the subject, and any accommodations they might need. The item type sampler, um, as I mentioned, both online and paper are currently on the NWA section of the main DOE website. We will also have those available on the assessment portal that will be ready within the next week. The item type sampler, um, the link below, it is a web version, so it behaves the same as the one within the secure testing browser. Again, we highly recommend that students that are taking the item type sampler, do it within the secure browser, uh, just to confirm that all of devices meet the system requirements. So I'm gonna pause for just a moment to see if there are any questions that we need to address about and the overview. So there were just two questions. Um, before I answer one of them, just a reminder to everyone and welcome to those of you who came in late. We are using the Q&A feature for all questions today. So if you have a question, uh, we request that you please click that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen in the menu bar and put your questions there. So the two questions we have so far, one of them is, was, is this a time test? So no, the assessment is designed to be untimed. And the other question was regarding this PowerPoint and its availability. This PowerPoint is going to be sent out to all registrants following this session, along with the Q&A. And then the recording itself will be posted later this week. Wonderful, thank you, Krista. Moving on to our next section, which is technology readiness. 
So the state solution secure browser or app is required for all of your testing devices. This is that blue NWEA icon that's shown on the slide. It is different than the secure testing browser that you previously used for map growth, which is that yellow and dark gray app. The link securebrowser.state.nwea.org is listed here. That's where you can go in and download that secure browser. And all of this information is also available in the State Solutions System and Technology Guide. We have some tips for installing that state secure testing browser. It does require a partner code to be entered. So if you are installing this manually, you will need to enter that code. Um, that will connect you to the assessment and which state program you are in. For Maine, that is ME. Most will likely want to install the secure testing browser in bulk, and we do have options to install over the network using MDM software, um, and that can also be found in that system and technology guide. There's also instructions on how to uninstall a previous version of the state secure testing browser. This is not going to apply for the spring administration, but just one thing to keep in mind for future administrations. And also we just wanna note that the map growth uh, secure testing browser does not need to be uninstalled before the state solutions secure browser is installed. So you can have both of them on your devices at the same time. We do recommend going in and turning off any auto updates during active testing. This way, no surprise updates will get installed that could potentially put the system on a newer version that might not yet be compatible with the software. So this slide shows some of those supported devices. For Windows, uh, it is versions 10 and 11. For Mac OS, it is versions 10.15, 11, 12, and 13. And noting that Mac OS 10.14 is no longer supported by Apple or NWEA, but we have not disabled this version from working. For Chromebooks, as long as you're on that current version or the previous five versions, then you're good to go. That does not include any beta version that might be out there. And then for iPads, we have iOS 14, 15, and 16. I do want to note that iOS 13 is no longer supported, and that if you are looking at the system and technology guide, iOS 16 is not updated in those resources yet, but it is now supported and it has been included in our testing that we do. So the minimum system requirements. Uh, you won't need to use any special application to access the management system. You just go into the web browser just like you've done in the past. So any of these listed can be used. Again, noting the Internet Explorer is no longer supported. So we support Firefox, Edge, Safari, Google Chrome, and Safari on the iPad. So we do have some readiness resources that are available. We have the system and technology guide um, that I have mentioned. This is going to have an IT readiness checklist. It goes over the network and system requirements, how much bandwidth you need, instructions on installing the secure testing browser, as well as all of the allowed lists. There is also an online readiness check. So this can be used uh, when you launch the secure browser. And it's just gonna check to make sure that the device that you are on meets all of those requirements and it will give you a pass or fail indicator. So if there are pieces that do not meet the requirements, it will list those on the screen so that you know what you need to go in and change. This slide just shows what that online readiness tools page looks like. So you can get the downloads for installing the secure browser, there is a school capacity calculator check. This can be used um, to check to see if you have enough bandwidth to support testing. So what you would do is you would just go in and input how many devices and test sessions you expect during that day. 
and it will let you know uh, the capacity. And then within the online readiness checker, there is also a speed test and then another link to the system requirements guide. We do uh, system maintenance and releases um, on a regular basis. So here we have listed um, some upcoming and one that just happened over the last weekend. Um, this is where the systems will be unavailable. So this refers to CAP, which is Comprehensive Assessment Platform. That's the MAP growth system. And that is actually how you are going to access the main through your system Acacia. So these are all scheduled to take place over the weekend. So there is little disruptions to users. And we do have a link there at the bottom of the slide um, that will take you to the maintenance calendar, which is updated on a regular basis. Should you have any questions or run into any issues, you can always reference that system and technology guide or of course, contact the NWEA partner support. So before we go into our next section, uh, we'll just take a pause to see if there's any questions um, about the technology readiness section we just covered. Thank you, Mindy. Um, so one of the questions was, is there a password required for the sampler? No, there is no password required for the sampler. You can access it through the secure browser or you can access it through the web link on our website. Another question was regarding students selecting their accommodations in the item sampler. So students do have the option in the item tape sampler to select whether or not they have text to speech. But for the actual assessment, the district or school assessment coordinator would need to assign text to speech to the student. And then there was one remaining question, are the item type sampler items akin to released items? So the items in the sampler are not live items, but are intended to allow students to practice using the software tools and accommodations available. They are not intended to have students study the content and they are not released items from previous assessments. All right, thank you, Krista. Moving on to assessment management in Acacia. So before we really dive into the management system, we just wanna remind everyone that as in previous administrations, if you are a district school assessment coordinator, an assessment coordinator or a proctor, you will need to be trained prior to the assessment administration. So this training session that you are currently in counts as one of those trainings. And then SAUs will conduct a school assessment coordinator orientation. This will include local administration schedule and procedures. And then all assessment coordinators will need to review the main assessment security handbook and complete and sign the MEA assessment security and data privacy agreement if you haven't already done this for the fall administration. So there are three components within Acacia. We have Acacia Manage. This is the management system that allows administrators and teachers to manage the entire assessment process, which includes managing students, online test assignments, monitoring test statuses, analyzing data reports, and more all in one place. Acacia Assess is the main through year assessment platform which is the secure browser and the online test delivery platform that delivers the assessments to students. And Acacia Reports is the online reporting suite, also known as ORS. This provides dynamic, real-time, easy to use reporting for the assessments. And we just wanna note that for the spring assessment, those real-time reports will be available starting in fall um, and we'll get more into the timing of those reports in some later slides. So logging into Acacia will be done via SSO. So this means that you are able to use your same username and password that you use to log into MARC. So the user roles will be managed through MARC and will be the same in both systems, although some permissions may vary slightly. A vital piece to the SSO connection is your school state code. If this is missing or if it is incorrect, it is going to cause you to receive an error and you will not be able to log into Acacia. 
Once you log into MARC, you will see a main through year link in that left navigation panel. Clicking on that link will direct you into the Acacia platform. But I do want to note that link is not going to be available in MARC until uh, the management system opens on 4.3. Once you log in and click that main through year link, it will take you here to the Acacia homepage. You will have at the top right a help section where some resources and materials will be available to you. You can access your profile, though keeping in mind users are managed in MARC, and then there is a button to log out. You'll see um, that there are some announcements that can be posted on the right-hand side, and then you have shortcuts as well as your menu on the left. So this slide goes over some of the tasks that will be done starting in early April. Um, one of the things will be importing the student roster into Acacia. This will be done by the main DOE. Importing student rosters in Map Growth will be done by the SAUs. Rostering in Map Growth is going to give you access to Map Growth reports with the RIT score from the through year assessment. We'll get into that um, in some later slides. And then student registration will be done by SAUs within Acacia. You can also um, update and add student information such as accommodations and NTCs. You can print test tickets. You can monitor your students' progress while they are testing, uh, data cleanup, and access operational reports during the assessment window. This table shows a high level view of the roles and permissions within the management system. So management of users and students will still be done in map growth, as well as rostering students in map growth. Registering students and managing those test sessions, accommodations and NTCs will be done in Acacia. This table shows a high level view of roles and permissions within the management system. You can see that both the district and school assessment coordinators can assign accommodations and NTCs. They, they can create optional student groups. We'll get into student groups in some upcoming slides. You can manage the online testing dashboard, print those test tickets and proctors will have access to manage the online testing dashboard, print test tickets, and proctor the assessment for students. We talked briefly about how school state codes play an important role in that SSO connection between Map Growth and Acacia. So having a missing or incorrect school state code is going to prohibit you from accessing Acacia. So the school state codes, they do need to align with the school state codes that are listed in the infrastructure data on the main DOE website. The school state code in Acacia will be the school org ID in your system. We do not need any leading zeros, so those should not be included in the school state code. And just a reminder that these school state codes should be reviewed before and during each assessment window. So users that can make these changes um, to the school state code will have a role of system administrator or district assessment coordinator. This can be done directly through MARC by going to modify preferences, modify district, edit name and school code under the school section. Now, if you use Clever for your map growth rostering, you will need to confirm that Clever is sharing the state ID field with NWEA. This is located under the school you will be sharing. The state ID field then maps to the school's state code in NWEA. If you are looking in Infinite Campus, the field shared with Clever is the uh, school number. And then just a reminder, if you update these school state codes in MARC, then the Clever Sync is going to override your manual updates if it's not also corrected in Clever. So again, this only applies if you are using Clever for rostering. So the rostering in Acacia for the main three-year assessment is going to be done by the main DOE. 
students will be roster rostered to their reporting school. This is the school that the student attends and at which they receive their instruction. The main DOE and Synergy are going to be the source of truth for students that are rostered for each assessment administration. So the main DOE will upload a roster file prior to each window, and then they will upload a daily Delta roster file for any changes that were made in Synergy from the prior day. So we talked about um, the map growth reports that are gonna have RIT scores from the main through year assessment. So these are map growth reports that you have been used to over the years. They are still going to be available to you. So in order for these re reports to be available, that student rostering must also be done in map growth as well as in Acacia. So we just went over that the main DOE will roster for the main through year assessment, but SAUs will need to roster students in map growth before May 26, which is the end of the spring window in order to have that RIT data passed back um, to those map growth reports. For future administrations, in order to have those map growth reports, that rostering and map growth is gonna need to be done before each window closes. And then the student ID is the connector between the map growth reporting, and it does need to be the same in both platforms. So SAUs will continue to use the NEO export to roster students in map growth. This is the same process that you have done in previous administrations. If there are any edits that need to be made to student demographics, those changes need to first be done in Synergy for Synergy to remain that source of truth. And then once those changes have been made, that information will be updated the next business day in Acacia via that daily Delta roster file. At the end of the spring assessment window, a sync is going to be done uh, to make sure that the main DOE is able to upload a final roster file into Acacia. So again, this ties back to the main DOE and Synergy being that source of truth. The dates for SAUs to clean up data, which could include updating accommodations and NTCs, will be between May 30th and June 2nd. NWEA will do any moves or swaps that may need to be done between June 5th and June 6th. And then the main DOE will have between June 7th and June 9th to upload that final spring roster file. So we've talked about rostering, so let's talk about registration. So once students are rostered by the main DOE, student test registrations are created automatically. Any edits to those test registrations will be done by the SAUs by an upload into Acacia with a registration report. Student accommodations, supports, NTCs can be done via the registration report but they can also be done manually in Acacia. And then on that registration report, students will have a line for each subject. So let's talk a little bit about student groups. So these can be used for both testing and reporting. And student groups in Acacia are the equivalent of what classes were in map growth. So you can test your students in that group and view reports in these groups. Some benefits of using student groups is that students can be grouped by grade by their teacher with a group name or group by assigned tests administered with a group name. Test tickets can be printed by grade by these assigned groups. And then students can only be grouped by grade level for the manage online testing and printing test tickets. And then also noting that a student does not need to be in the same testing and reporting group. So student groups are located under the students section in the menu. You can create and edit student groups manually, or you can select that upload in the menu under students to upload student groups in bulk.
And then you can also view student groups in Manage Online Testing. This can be found under the Actions column and View All Students. And then you will see a column for the student group. Any questions before we move on to the next section about the management system in Acacia? Yes, there are plenty. So just clarification, a district assessment coordinator or school assessment coordinator will be the ones who will be able to enter accommodations for a student. Accommodations from the fall assessment of map growth will not roll over with a student, so the accommodations must be assigned for each student in each subject area for each term. Another one of the questions was, will the student roster that is being that the state is using to import to Acacia and Mark be available to districts so the same roster is imported into the Mark map growth platform? We will be utilizing the assessment rosters available in NEO. So if you pull your assessment roster from NEO, it will be the same roster. The next question is, what if we roster our NUIA data with Clever? You can continue to use Clever to roster for map growth, and the roster in Acacia for the main three-year assessment will be imported by the main DOE. You do not need to change how you roster. However, be aware that occasionally with Clever, things don't line up exactly as they would with the main DOE roster, and so we recommend using that roster from NEO. Are SPED students marked as alternate assessment in the special education section of Synergy uploaded by the state? So for clarification, students marked as participants in the alternate assessment do not appear in the rosters for the main through year assessment. Will RIT scores be available to SEUs within a time frame similar to math growth? So for spring 2023, the RIT scores will be available in July 2023. So I'll provide some additional clarification to that answer that's in the Q&A. And then the main three-year assessment will generate RIT scores that will still be accessible in math growth reports. Will they be directly comparable to math growth scores? So yes, RIT scores generated by the main three-year assessment will be available in math growth in July 2023. And our psychometrics team has validated these are directly comparable to map growth RIT scores. All right, thank you, Krista. All right, our next section that we're going to get into is accessibility. So this is universal tools, designated supports and accommodations. So on the slide, we see that accommodations are going to require an IEP or 504 plan. Designated supports are determined on an individual basis and universal tools are for all students. So the types of accessibility features fall into two buckets. The first is non-embedded. So these are features provided locally that do not change the assessment within the platform and then embedded, which does impact the delivery of the assessment within the platform. So this slide goes over the universal tools and features that are included. So for a non-bedded universal tool, a scratch paper is available. When we go into embedded universal tools for math and reading, those include a calculator. This is specific to math items only. Color contrast, this is the ability to change the color on the screen to adjust to the student's visual needs or preferences. There is graph paper uh, for math assessments that is available. There is a guideline to assist with reading text. There are help videos to show students how to respond to question types or use the tools. There is a highlighter to highlight text. Keyboard navigation to navigate through the assessment by using a keyboard. This does depend on the device that is being used. There is a notepad that you can take notes on um, for any item. And a protractor to measure angles. This again is for math and is for specific items. There is a math reference sheet. Uh, this displays conversion tables, formulas, and then lastly, we have a Zoom where the student can enlarge the text and graphics on the screen. So a calculator is not going to be needed for grades three through five in math, 
grades six through eight and high school will have options for a basic, a scientific, or a graphing calculator, again, depending on the item. And then for paper-based forms for grades three through eight and high school, a calculator will only be allowed on the first part of the assessment. So designated supports increase accessibility without altering the construct of any assessment item. And it is determined on an individual basis by an educational team. So an educational team is two or more education professionals with knowledge of a student's performance. And designated supports do need to be consistent with the student's normal routine during classroom instruction. So non-embedded designated supports, these um, will be indicated in the registration file. These include individual or separate setting, a small group setting, alternate aids or supports, bilingual word glossary for multilingual learners, and mathematical support for the math assessment. Text-to-speech is a designated support, which is available in English and guidance for text-to-speech can be found in the accessibility guide. The need for text-to-speech as a designated support will be indicated on the student's test registration profile. So in math, all text will be read aloud, but in reading, passages will not be read. Text-to-speech can be assigned manually. So this is located under the student's profile by selecting accessibility supports and then selecting the subject to which text-to-speech is needed. So accommodations are changes in procedures or materials that are used to increase equitable access during the assessment for students with a documented need in an IEP or a 504 plan. Non-embedded accommodations will also be indicated in the registration file. And these include read aloud or human reader, American Sign Language, a scribe, a calculator throughout the entire math assessment, and read aloud or human reader for reading passages in the reading assessment. Embedded accommodations will also be indicated in the registration file, and these include paper-based forms, large print, and braille. So for paper and large print, these are available for students with an IEP or 504 plan. This requires the assessment to be paper-based and not administered online. So the spring order for paper and large print is gonna be from April 3rd to May 12th. Paper and large print will need to be ordered, but then they are print on demand. And then after paper and large print forms are completed, a scribe then needs to uh, transcribe the student's responses into the online assessment delivery system, exactly how the student has responded. And then just a note that the paper and large print forms are not adaptive. So for paper and large print accommodations, you will need to log in to the Secure FTP. This will be provided to the DAC to download and print the forms locally. Paper and large print forms will also be entered into the system by a scribe. Those do need to be securely stored and then securely destroyed once the scribe has completed um, and the form is no longer needed. And those materials will need to be destroyed by May 29th. So paper and large print can be assigned manually. This again is located under the student's profile by selecting accessibility supports and then the subject for paper and large print. And then the spring order uh, window for Braille is also from April 3rd to May 12th. And so once the Braille materials have been ordered, they will be shipped directly to the school. 
and Braille booklets are available as indicated by the student's IEP or 504 plan. And students who require Braille, they will receive a paper-based contracted Braille assessment. And again, all of the students' responses will need to be entered into the system um, by an assessment administrator or proctor. And then once those responses have been entered, the Braille forms will need to be destroyed. And that date um, is May 29th as well. As with text-to-speech, large print, and paper forms, Braille can also be assigned manually. Again, this is located in the same area under the student's profile by selecting that Accessibility Supports tab and then choosing the subject for Braille. Any questions about the accessibility slides that we just covered? We do have two questions. One of them um, is not about the accessibility slides, but it's about the presence of phones and smartwatches within the assessment room. So if at all possible, it's preferable that devices like cell phones do not enter the testing room. However, if they do, we do ask that the proctor collects them so that students don't have access to additional devices during the assessment. And then there was a question that um, perhaps needs to be clarified, but it says, please repeat who needs to be trained. And I believe that question came in just about the time that Braille was on the screen. but it looks like it's from Nicole, if Nicole wants to clarify. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm posing as Nicole today. She <laughs> signed us up. Um, no, I was, you, you said that, uh, that this, this session would count as a training session for us, but you also said that it would be a requirement that certain roles would need to be trained. And I just wanna make sure I know who needs to be trained. Oh, essentially your school assessment coordinators need to be trained in the sense that they need to know what your district's procedures are for materials distribution and collection, what your assessment schedule is, making sure that they are up to date on their assessment security, which they should be because they've probably signed that agreement by now, um, and that they know how to prepare their proctors if additional steps are needed for that. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to move into our next section, which is NTCs or not tested codes. So NTCs are reasons explaining why a student may not have taken an assessment. So the codes for Maine are INV, which is for invalid. This means that the student's assessment was invalidated, maybe due to a security breach. And this NTC will require main DOE approval. PAR is for parent refusal. So this is where the student did not take the assessment per a written request from a parent or guardian. STR is for student refusal. This is for when a student refuses to take the assessment. And then just noting that for both parent and student refusal, Students who are eligible for the assessment but do not participate will count as non-participants in Maine's accountability system. EMW is for an emergency medical waiver. This also requires Maine DOE approval and is used if the student was not able to take the assessment because of an approved emergency medical waiver. And then lastly, RMV is for removal and this can be used for several scenarios. The student may have left the state before the assessment window, if the student is a homeschooled student, or if there are duplicate student records. And then for most homeschooled students, the decision can be made locally if the student should take the main three-year assessments. So there are a couple places where you can add these NTCs. The first is in the student's profile. Again, it is selecting that accessibility support tabs at the top. You would then select the test administration and click the view supports button. And then as you scroll down the page, you'll see a test attribute section. And then this is where you would select the NTC that is needed for reading or math. You can also update NTCs in bold with that registration file. 
So in order to do this, you would go to the menu tab, select upload, which is under the student section. And then in that registration file, you would populate that three letter NTC code in column AH. And then lastly, NTCs can also be added in manage online testing. So once you select the test administration, the subject, the testing grade and the organization, you can then see a list of students under either the testing list or the testing settings tab. And then to update, you would select the test attributes icon. This is under the actions column. And then a window is gonna pop up um, where you can not only add those NTCs, but you could also add designated supports or accommodations. And then just another reminder that EMV and INV um, will require main DOE approval. And then just as a reminder, whenever you're making any of these changes manually in the system, be sure to save the updates that you are making. Any questions about not tested codes? So we do have two questions. One of them is, is the registration report similar to the roster file? So yes, the registration report is provided as an export of which students have been rostered into the Acacia platform. Accommodations and not tested codes can be added to this file and uploaded to assign them to students in bulk. And there was an additional question, what code is used in the event a student does not have time to finish the assessment? So we do recommend assessing students towards the beginning of the four week assessment administration window so that all students will have time to finish the assessment. We do not have a not tested code for incomplete assessments. All right, thank you, Krista. The next section is going to be preparing for and monitoring the assessments. So printing test tickets is gonna be one of the first things that you will do um, before the students can even log in to take the assessment. So they are available in a couple formats, uh, PDF with either one test ticket per page or PDF with four test tickets per page. There is also an option to export as a CSV to create test tickets within a spreadsheet. You can print test tickets in two ways. The first is in the manage online testing and then the second is in the student's profile under the test registration tab. Proctors can print on demand, so there is no need to wait for an assessment coordinator to print and provide proctors with those test tickets. And then there is also a roster in a PDF format that can show a list of the test tickets that have been printed. So in map growth students, needed to be added to a session or a group in order to take the assessment, but in Acacia, that is not the case. So this slide shows you where in Manage Online Testing you'd be able to print test tickets, and then whether you want to print all of the test tickets, print selected test tickets, or generate a CSV for selected test tickets. And then on the right side of the slide are visuals of how test tickets will look if you print one per page or four per page. So let's talk about testing progress. So testing progress is able to be viewed at a group, SAU, or school level. The testing progress is going to show how many students are ready to test, how many are in progress, if there's any alerts such as maybe a student gets disconnected or they have encountered an issue and they weren't able to complete the assessment, how many students have completed and submitted their assessment, and if any assessments need to be canceled or if a reset request needs to happen. And then just noting that NTCs will not update the student's testing status. So if an assessment needs to be reset, this will need to go through the main DOE for approval. So the definition of a reset is when the student is gonna receive a new test ticket, and then upon logging in, they will start at the beginning of the assessment. So the scenarios that would qualify for an assessment to be reset 
are if the student began the assessment for the wrong grade level, the student began the assessment without proper accommodations per their IEP or 504 plan, or if the student began the assessment with an accommodation that was not documented in their IEP or 504 plan. So there's another scenario that might come up as well. And this is what if a student has started their assessment, but they need to have TTS added after the fact, but a full reset is not necessarily required. So this can be added without going through the main DOE approval process. And it can happen either before or during the assessment in both reading and math. So what the proctor would need to do is ask the student to log out of their assessment. And then the proctor would reach out to the school or district assessment coordinator, who would then go into the student's profile and add TTS. Once TTS has been added, the student can then log back in and they will have TTS for the remainder of the assessment. So we do wanna note that if TTS is assigned after the student has started the assessment, it might not work for some questions. And a full reset could be requested if the student has completed five or fewer questions. So we have this process flow chart um, that can kind of walk through if a student is able to have their assessment reset. If they are, you can then submit a form to kick off that approval process. And we're going to look at that form in just a few slides. So let's talk about moving or swapping a test, which is also going to require main DOE approval. So a move or swap would be needed if a student logs in with the wrong test ticket. And if the second student will not complete the assessment, then a move can be requested. But if the second student intends to take the assessment, they should take the assessment using the incorrect test tickets. And then once both students have completed their assessments, then a swap request would be needed. So here is an example of what that form looks like. You'll input some of your information and then information on the school that the student attends, what you are requesting. So whether it is a reset, a move or a swap, you'll include the student's ID, the grade level along with the subject. And then once this form has been submitted, it's going to notify the DOE that there is a request that's been placed. And the DOE will then go in and review the, uh, the request and approve or deny. You can also contact partner support, um, but the form is the preferred method. And then um, both the request form and the process flow will be available on the assessment portal, um, which will be coming soon within the next week. So let's talk about if you have a student that transfers. So per DOE policy, students who move out of a school must be removed from Synergy on the last day of attendance. So this does need to occur regardless of whether a request for records has been received from another school. Students who move into a school must then be enrolled in Synergy by the new attending school immediately. So this is after being removed from the previous school. Once the enrollment has been updated in Synergy, this is going to appear in that daily Delta file that the main DOE will upload. It is going to be the responsibility of the new school to ensure that students can finish in complete portions of their assessments. So the new school would need to reach out to the old school to get the student's test ticket information. And this information should then be provided to the new school in a secure manner. If the transferred student has not yet started an assessment, the new school is going to want to confirm that the testing school field in the registration file has been updated to reflect the new attending school. This can also be done in the management system. So the reporting school field for Maine is going to populate the testing school. So if there is a situation where the student is not taking the assessment at their reporting school, 
the testing location would then be used to designate an alternate testing location. If the testing school changes from the reporting school, then that testing school is not going to have access to student results, so they would need to request that from the reporting school. The testing school field in the management system can be found under tests and manage test registration tabs, which is in the student's profile. So the transfer process will also need to be done in map growth. So the old SAU would remove the current term from the student's profile in map growth, and then the new SAU um, would roster the student as normal within map growth. If you want to move their map growth historical data to the new SAU, you can choose to complete the district transfer form, and the new SAU can also go in and request this information as well. So if you are a school that uses Clever, you just need to stop sharing the student as part of your regular Clever sync for that term, and that will automatically unenroll them, and you won't need to do anything manually in the system. Any questions about preparing and monitoring the assessments? We do have two questions. So one of them was a clarification on um, students who don't have time to finish the assessments. So just um, to provide clarification, there's no language usage part. So we have just math and reading. And to count as a participant in the spring and receive a main specific scaled score, a student has to complete 25% of all operational or scored questions on the summative portion of the assessment. There's a lot of qualifiers, but the assessment in the spring has a summative portion and a diagnostic portion. So 25% of all operational or scored items on the summative portion. And due to the diagnostic and the field test questions, this is not the same necessarily as the first 25% of the assessment. So I don't have like a hard cutoff for you at when you hit that 25% of operational items as those questions are shuffled, diagnostic and summative, but that would be what counts as a participant. And then to obtain a RIT score, a student must complete the entire assessment because all questions are used to determine that RIT score. So I just wanted to provide that clarification that a student can count as a participant without finishing the assessment, but I can't give you like a hard cut of where that is for that student because of how the questions are shuffled. But it would be 25% of all operational items on the summative portion of the spring assessment. For test tickets, are test tickets the same for both math and reading or do tickets need to be printed for each test? A test ticket is needed for each subject as they provide different login credentials for each test. All right, moving into our next section, which is regional and out-of-state programs. And this section just has a single slide. So students will be rostered at their attending school. This is known as the reporting school. So all student reports are gonna be provided to the attending school. And so this allows educators and staff at the program location to administer the assessment and have access to the students' results to be able to inform instruction. The attending school will share students' testing status and performance information with the responsible SAU. So we do wanna mention that NWEA is currently exploring possibilities for reporting student testing information to both the attending school or SAU for future administrations. So we will provide additional information at a later date as to whether or not that may happen for future administrations. Any questions about regional or out-of-state programs? There's no new questions at this time. Perfect. All right, so we've covered rostering and registration. We've talked about how to assign accommodations getting test tickets printed, some of the prep work that will go on. So let's get into what the proctor and student experience is gonna look like. So the first step is gonna be for the students to launch the secure browser. 
So again, just another reminder that this is the new State Solutions Secure Browser, which is that blue icon shown here and not the yellow and dark gray map growth icon that you have used in past administrations. From there, the student is going to enter information from their test tickets. This is going to be their username, password, and session ID. And they do need to enter it exactly how it is shown on the test ticket. And then once they log in, the next screen that they will see is gonna show their name, grade, and subject at the top. And the proctor is going to want to have the students confirm that they are indeed seeing their correct information. Once the students have confirmed their information is correct, they can select the next button, which will bring them to a stop sign. And then from there, the students will wait until the proctor gives verbal approval that the students can go ahead and begin their assessment. So this is what that login screen looks like. This is that summary screen. So this is where the student is gonna verify their name is correct at the top of the screen. And then the grade and subject is also shown at the top as well as in the middle of the screen. And then this slide is that stop sign that they will see prior to the proctor giving them the go ahead to click that next button and start the assessment. So we mentioned this in some of the beginning slides, but if a student does need to take a break or step away, they can simply log out of the assessment. So proctoring for the main three-year assessment is different than proctoring for map growth. So in map growth, there were a lot more clicks in the system to be able to pause on behalf of the students. In Acacia, that progress is saved after every question. So when they log back in, they will just pick up where they left off. This is also true if their computer shuts down or if there's a power outage, none of that progress will be lost. There is an inactivity warning. So for assessment security, if the student left their machine on or if they forgot to log out, there will be a time warning message after being idle for 14 and a half minutes. Then once that time warning message pops up, the student then has about 30 seconds to let the system know they are still there before they get a message that the system has logged them out due to inactivity. So if they do receive that second message, clicking exit will be their only option, but then of course they can just log back in and resume where they left off. And then once the assessment is completed, the students will see this message on the screen that they have finished their assessment. We do wanna note that the RIT score is no longer going to populate on the screen as it did for map growth. So on the proctor side of things, as we went over in some earlier slides, they can easily manage um, testing progress from the manage online testing. So this allows them to see where their students are uh, within testing. So this screen is gonna show testing progress drilled down to the student level. So they can see the test status, they can see the school, the group that they might be in and any uh, of the response progress, um, which is how many questions have been answered. And then here we get into some descriptions um, of what the testing progress icons are and what each of them mean. So that registered icon means that the student has been registered, but the test is not yet available. So this would usually happen before testing is active. So before that May 1st date. The enrollment hold usually means that there is something missing on the student's profile that is required for them to take the assessment. You're not gonna see this icon come up too often, but if you do, you would need to contact uh, partner support. The ready to test icon is where you will see most students before they log in. This indicates that they are ready to log in and start their, their assessment. And then the in progress icon, this is gonna show that the student is logged in and they are actively going through questions within their assessment. 
The inactive icon would indicate that they have been logged out, or it could mean that an internet connection has been lost or the device has shut off. Again, all of their progress will be saved after the last question that was answered. And then the completed icon indicates that the student has completed and submitted their assessment. So once um, they're in that completed uh, status, students will not be able to log back into that session. So there are a couple of ways to report an issue or problem with an item. So if you feel that an item doesn't have the correct answer, or if there is an issue with the content or even a typo, these can all be reported to us. We do a lot of vigorous checking in our QA process, but again, if there's something you'd like us to look further into, you can do this through the assessment portal or by calling partner support. So if you do have a problem item to report, we will need to know this uh, student state ID, the grade and subject, the session name, and the item sequence or question number. And then for security reasons, we ask that you do not uh, take a photo or provide any detailed information around the content of that item. So this will be available on the main assessment portal. There will be a contact main uh, partner support section and then you would then choose the email option and then you would populate that information that we went over. Any questions about the student and proctor experience? We do have a few questions. So one of them was, will we receive RIT scores in the fall as well or will that be sooner? <clears throat> so for spring 2023, the RIT scores will be available in a preliminary student results file in July. And then for all future administrations, so fall 2023 and beyond, NWEA has indicated that the reports will be available with RIT scores within NWEA's platform within 24 to 48 hours. Another question was, if students go too fast, do they still get the sloth to slow down? Um, that feature is not yet available with the main three-year assessment. And similarly, for the alerts, students are rapid guessing, which is the same as the sloth. Um, again, it's not available with them at this time for the main three year assessment. There's another question that I'm going to read, and then I'm going to let Alex or Mindy answer it. So it came in the chat. Is there a way that the test coordinator can see all the students or all the students in a grade and their progress as a way for makeups and such? So perhaps Mindy or Alex, you could talk about that testing status report. Yeah, so there are two ways to see that. So in the Manage Online Testing Dashboard, you can filter down um, by your school and grade level and subject to see how many students are in each status. So if they haven't started yet, if they're in progress or completed. So that's a good way to see that in that dashboard. And then uh, there are operational reports as well, such as that testing status report, where you can get a CSV export of either individual students to see their statuses, and you can filter to get those totals. And there is actually one that shows um, the totals themselves. So I think we're going to about to touch upon those reports, but you can also do that in the Manage Online Testing Dashboard. Thank Perfect. you, Alex. And there was just one question that came in. <laughs> are schools required to test three times a year? So schools are required to assess in the fall and the spring. The winter is optional. Perfect. Thank you, Krista and Alex. Yes, that question was perfectly timed because our next section is operational reports. So operational reports are going to provide district and school assessment coordinators another way to track that progress throughout the assessment window, such as the testing statuses, track NTC usage, track paper, large print, or braille materials. The operational reports are not going to include results from the assessments, but they are going to provide you with data that you previously had to call partner support on. So to access operational reports from the main menu, you would go to the report section and click on operational. From there, you will select the organization and the report type from the drop-down list. 
And then the information on the report will appear below and then you can select an icon to download um, the report. So here is a list of all of those operational reports that may be available to you. So the registration report, this is going to be an export of all of the students that were rostered. So this is going to be in the same format as the upload where you would update NTCs, accommodations, or supports. Student demographic information is not going to be updated here. So again, that source of truth goes back to Synergy. So any updates to demographics should be updated in Synergy. And then the next day they would, uh, they would be reflected um, in the system via that daily Delta file. The NTC usage report, this details um, any assessments that have a not tested code of science. And you can also validate those NTCs from here. The summary test status report. This is going to be at a high level. And so you will be able to see the totals for how many students haven't started, um, how many students have completed. The testing status report details the status of each student's assessment. So this is going to be whether they have started, they have completed, or maybe if they have encountered an issue. Student mobility report, this is going to detail any students that have been transferred from one school or SAU to another, so you can ensure that you have all of the students that you need. The registration report, this is going to help you know um, all of the students that are currently there and any students who may not be showing up yet or need to have that transfer process initiated. The material orders report, this is going to summarize the quantity of assessments um, by the school that were assigned either a paper or pencil, large print or braille accommodation. And then lastly, the organization report, this is going to list what schools are part of the SAU within the system. So this is going to come from the data that is provided in the state org file each year. So you're not going to be able to make any changes here, but you can track to make sure everything is correct. Any additional questions about these operational reports? There's no additional questions right now. Perfect. All right, so next up, we are going to talk about data and reporting. So for the spring term, data and reports outside of the operational reports um, are not going to be an, available until later in the summer after the standard setting has been completed. But we do want to go over what we expect these reports to look like um, that will be available in the Acacia platform. So the student score data file, uh, this will contain all valid test events for assessments completed within the administration, administration by grade and subject. It's going to include the main scale score, the main scale score SEM, the RIT achievement percentile at course content and instructional area levels. There are going to be organization reports at a district level, a school level, and a group level. And each of these will show the student's performance for that level. And then there also will be a dynamic student report, and this is going to show the student's achievement on the main three year assessment. So it will reflect the RITs in course area and instructional area, as well as the student's content level scale score, their current achievement level, achievement percentile, and average score for the SAU. And then it also will show if the student's um, answers were correct, incorrect, or partially correct by specific content standards. So organization reports at the district and school level, this is going to help answer how your students are doing overall, how your students are performing compared to main benchmarks, 
and then what the lowest and highest reporting categories are. So these reports can be used after testing to see results and be part of the instructional decision-making process uh, when you want to use the data to inform student groups or display data from a single session. These reports are able to be downloaded as a PDF file and columns are able to be sorted prior to printing. Here's some additional information around the dynamic student report. So this report is gonna help answer if your students are on track, what your students' strengths are and suggested areas of focus. They can help you understand how you can leverage relative strengths and suggested areas of focus to help your students. This file um, can also be downloaded and then printed as a PDF. And then ISRs or individual student reports. This report is gonna show student level data to support each student's progress. So it can help answer how the student is performing relative to grade level expectations in both reading and math. And then what the student's strengths are and suggested areas of focus. So these are gonna be printed and distributed by SAUs or schools after the administration. Um, again, noting that these will be delayed for spring and will be available later in the summer after the standard studying. And then the ISR is really just a report that um, is provided to parents and families so that they can take a look at their, uh, their child's performance. So this is an example of what that first page of the ISR will look like. So it's going to show the achievement levels and the overall performance in both reading and math. And then this is page two of the ISR. So this is gonna show um, additional information about the student's achievement level in reading and in math, and then the math instructional area scores. So to access these reports from the menu, you would select student scores from within that report section. And then once you are in student scores, you will look at the tabs on the top right to show you the categories you can select. So organization, student, demographic, and ISR bulk print. So here is an example of a SAU level report. So this is gonna show you the number of schools in that SAU within the different achievement levels. And then to drill in further, you would just click each bar within the graph, and then it will show you the school level view, which is this. So this is that drill down. You will see the number of students completed, the average score, and the score levels. And then this is another example of what the school level will look like. Um, this can show you the number of students with in the different achievement levels. And then there is a median score comparison on the right. This is gonna be broken out by school, district, and state. This is an example of that school or group level, which will show the individual students listed. And then again, a median score comparison on the right by group, school, district, and by state. This is an example of the report at the student level. So it is gonna show you their scale score, their RIT score, and their achievement percentile. It is also gonna show the students' responses by instructional area, if they got it correct or incorrect, the item type that it was, and the item difficulty. So, just to wrap up, um, operational reports are available throughout the assessment window and data and reporting for spring 23 will be available later in the summer, possibly mid-August. Um, and this will include the reports that we just went over as well as the map growth reports 
with RIT from the through year assessments. So any questions that might be in the Q&A about data and reporting? We have one question. So it was, do proctors have to be rostered anywhere in the platform? And the answer is user accounts and roles are taken from the map growth system and the same login is used. Any new users or updates to roles would need to be made in map growth. All right, next we're gonna talk about getting paired resources and some tips. So some important dates as we lead up to that spring window. So on April 3rd is when the management system in Acacia opens. So this is when SAUs can begin to roster their students in map growth and upload student registration within Acacia. April 3rd is also when requests for paper, large print, and braille materials can begin. And noting that May 12th would be the last day to register students who need braille. And it's also the recommended last day to register students who might need paper or large print forms. So again, that spring 23 assessment window runs from May 1st to the 26th. And if you have students that were enrolled after May 19th, they do not need to take the assessment. And then June 2nd is gonna be the last day to add NTCs or update any supports or accommodations. So in addition to this training session, um, in order to get prepared, um, you will want to review and be familiar with the technical requirements for the main through year assessments um, within Acacia. So downloading that new state solutions secure browser, again, it is different than the map growth secure browser and the map growth secure browser does not need to be uninstalled before you can install the new state solutions secure browser. So you could have both browsers on your devices. You'll want to review main DOE guidelines for accessibility and identify students that might be in need of specific accommodations and supports. And then reviewing um, scheduling guidance from the main DOE and then also that DOE assessment security handbook. So we'll have a lot of resources that will be available to you. Um, they are currently housed on the main DOE website. Um, the majority of those are going to transfer over to the main assessment portal, which is on an NWEA connections page. Um, but those resources are item type samplers that we talked about, both online and paper form, that online student tutorial, and then a list of all of the guides. So there are two proctor guides an assessment administration guide, and then a proctor user guide. There is an assessment coordinator guide, a user and student management guide, an accessibility guide, and an assessment checklist to make sure that um, you've done everything to get prepared. And then just listed here again, um, are links to the state solution system and technology guide, as well as the main assessment security handbook. So here are just some suggestions um, for a smooth assessment experience. So we do recommend enabling auto on devices that may be used for TTS and providing headphones. Ensuring that all students have the appropriate accessibility features assigned, validate that all school proctors have the access they need, and then to utilize that manage online testing dashboard to be able to monitor the testing progress of your students throughout the window. And then on that dashboard, um, you can refresh it in order to see updated information. So some troubleshooting, troubleshooting tips to keep in mind. So in Acacia, as we've mentioned, the student's answers are saved after every question. So if a student runs into issues, the first step is gonna be to have them log out, close the app, and then log back in. The second step would be a full uh, reboot. 
So if neither of those are successful, then you would need to contact partner support. And then again, as we mentioned earlier, there is no proctor action needed for the student to log back in. So as long as they have their test ticket, um, they would just log back in um, with the information on that test ticket. Any questions about preparation, the resources available, or some of the tips provided? So there are some questions. One of them is, are all the documents in final form yet? So at this time, the system and technology guide is in its final form, uh, but the other documents are in draft form. There will be only minor adjustments between the draft and the final form, however. Um, things like updating links that may be missing at this time, updating screenshots, or a sentence here or there change to the scripts. So the, although we don't recommend using these drafts as your final resource, please know that nothing drastic is going to change at the same time. Um, another question is, will the slide deck used here be made available along with the recording of this session? Yes, all registrants will receive the slide deck following the session, um, immediately following the session, as soon as the Q&A is ready. And then the slide deck will be posted to our, slate, our site later. And then an additional question, how were district assessment coordinators notified about the PLO? They were notified via email. I generated a list of all district assessment coordinators in NEO, sent an email to those individuals with the PLO sign up. However, the document for how to sign up for PLO in case your district assessment coordinator didn't get it is also posted on our website as well. And the link to our website is in the chat. All right, so we are getting to the last few slides. So communication and partner support. So for any main DOE policy related questions, if you're not able to find your answer in the guides or materials available, you would direct those questions to Krista and her contact information is listed. And then again, um, the transition from the DOE website to the main assessment portal should be happening in the next week prior to 4.3. Um, but we will get a notification sent out um, when that transition happens. And then once the assessment portal is ready, we will also have a direct link on the main DOE website. Should you have any questions about the main through your assessment, you can contact NWEA Partner Support. That phone number is a main dedicated support line. It is 855-430-1777. Reps are available Monday through Friday between the hours of 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then you will also be able to reach out to partner support within that main assessment portal. So it will give you the option um, to chat with them, to email them, um, or list the phone number if you need to call. And that concludes um, our training, but I know a lot of the questions were answered in between each section, um, but we do want to have some time for additional questions and answers if there are any. And if there aren't, then you are free to sign off. Um, as Krista mentioned, she will send out um, the slide deck as well as an FAQ and we do thank you for all joining us today. <laughs>